and Kelly and welcome to Kapowski Reads and I love Halloween. I love it. I'm also a giant wuss. I am scared of everything. <laughs> Most things. So I want to talk about my six favourite Halloween reads. My favourite Halloween books. They are mainly classics. I would argue they're all classics but that seems quite cryptic. That will make sense super soon. So let's just start. First one that I love and I highly recommend is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. I recently got this gorgeous cover actually and it's from the Wordsworth collection. So it's one of those little kind of small ones but it looks nice next to my Sherlock Holmes collection. So I couldn't resist. So this book is all about Dr. Jekyll, who takes a very special drug, which kind of unleashes Mr. Hyde, who is the embodiment of all of the evil within him. And it's a really enjoyable narrative on good versus evil. And it is super chilling, the, the horrible things that uh, Mr. Hyde gets up to, but it is a really enjoyable read. And it's also really short. I think it's only maybe a hundred odd pages. This book collection has got quite a few stories by Robert Louis Stevenson. Dr. H Jekyll and Mr. Hyde is only the first one and it's only 75 pages in this so that can be beasted out in you know the best part of an hour and then you still feel like you're getting a spooky read. It's a very chilling story. It's inspired so many other books including another book that I love which is Hyde just up there by Craig Russell which is another terrifying book. Uh, next book I'd love to recommend is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Another gorgeous, gorgeous hardback. And my boyfriend got me this uh, last year, a few years ago, last year, who knows. Um, and it's just absolutely gorgeous and I love it. And this book is one of the first scary classics that I ever read. And it stuck with me and it's become a firm favourite. This book is all about a very, very incredibly talented doctor, Dr Frankenstein, who is telling the story of that one time that he decided to build a man out of body parts of the deceased. And things did not go quite according to his plan. I absolutely love this book. It's such an excellent narrative about, you know, who of true evil and who, who the real monsters really are and I really enjoyed this book. I'm looking forward to reading this again in October. And here begins the vampire portion of this video because the next book is Carmilla by Sheridan Le Fanu and this book is often credited as being the inspiration behind Dracula and it tells the story of a young woman who lives a very isolated life with her father in their lovely castle in the middle of nowhere and one day a carriage arrives with a young woman inside who is in need of aid and that person is brought into the home and nursed back to health and that person is Carmilla who is not quite the shy and retiring young woman that they suspected she was. This again is a teeny tiny book, it is a beautiful love story and a beautiful narrative on society I absolutely love Carmilla and it's so short that I highly recommend if you want a quick gothic read then I would go for Carmilla. It is an amazing story that really really sticks with you and it's a beautiful queer romance. I don't think that people talk about this story nearly as much as they should. It's excellent and it's so so well written and it's just it's such a short book but every time I read it I just feel so so fondly for the characters that I have grown to love in such a short number of pages. So I highly recommend. And of course I have to follow Carmilla with Dracula by Bram Stoker. And this is possibly my most gorgeous version of this book. I have, I have a few. This one has sprayed edges and is a hefty hefty tome with the castle on the back. So this book starts off with Jonathan Harker, a young, somewhat naive solicitor popping off to Transylvania to meet with a client who is called Count Dracula and lives in a very remote castle where the locals fear to go anywhere near. 
and Jonathan starts to find some very strange goings on while he's staying at the castle and kind of starts to fear for his safety. The book then takes us on a journey across this across the ocean with Dracula coming to England to his new home and along the way carnage happens. Utter utter carnage and it's such an interesting sort of narrative of uh, the Victorian attitude towards a lot of things. And I love Lucy Westenra. She does not get nearly as much uh, book time, as many pages as she deserves, but I think that she's such an amazing character that I would have loved to have seen more of her. But the Lucy that I got, I really enjoyed. I just think that this book is just such a... Uh, I just really think that this is probably one of my favourite favourite ever classics. I read it every year and it spooks me out every year and I hate blood but I will read read a classic vampire book without even thinking about it. This one this one is it is quite big but it doesn't feel big because it's all told through the form of letters which letters are easy enough to speed through or it just feels like I speed through them because I just love this book. I I actually have wanted to reread this book since about maybe April but it feels wrong so I've had to wait till October. One of my newest additions to my favourite oh, my favourite scary spooky classic list is not technically a classic but it kind of is. It's a recent edition I only read it for the first time last year and it is a firm favourite and it's Powers of Darkness, not by Bram Stoker. <laughs> it's by Valdemar Admanson, and the existence of this book is one of my very favourite literature stories ever. This book should not exist because this book is sometimes referred to as the lost Icelandic translation of Dracula because back in 1901, Valdemar Admanson was tasked with translating Dracula into Icelandic and he translated, he translated something and that book was Powers of Darkness which everybody believed to be a faithful translation of Dracula and nobody noticed that it wasn't until 1986 which was the year I was born um, when Dracula scholars noticed that Powers of Darkness was definitely not a translation of Dracula. There were some similarities but translation it was not. Um, and it was noticed that instead of translating Dracula into Icelandic, Valdemar had rewritten Dracula. Just just rewritten it. <laughs> it's first of all it's shorter than Dracula so if I compare the two books yeah, <laughs> it is about half the size of Dracula. It also takes place, so much more of Powers of Darkness takes place in Dracula's castle. It is far, far sexier than Dracula, which is, you know, kind of sexy at times. But Powers of Darkness, there is a lot more smart in that. And it is just an absolutely fascinating, the existence of this book just fascinates me. But it is a good story as well and in addition to being able to read the lost translation the book is full of footnotes which sort of explain either the suspected rationale behind passages or amendments or ch you know just omissions of things but also explains the process behind translating the book that had been translated from English to Icelandic back to English. It was a whole, whole event and it is one of my favourite stories about about a book being made. And finally, could it be a Halloween spooky read recommendation without mentioning Edgar Allan Poe? I think no. And I kind of did intend to rhyme there. It made me smile. I Again, I'm not huge on spooky spooky books but classic and gothic spooky and horror is is my thing. That is what I love, that is the level of horror that I want and Edgar Allan Poe is, you know, when you think of 
the spooky poems. I don't know about you, but I think of Edgar Allan Poe. So that's why I recommend, I mean, not reading the entire collection, but, you know, dipping in and out. And I just think that that's such a fun way to really get into the spooky spirit. And because they're only short, it's it's easier for an, a wuss like me not to get freaked out. So those are my spooky season recommendations. And I would love to know if you've got any Halloween scary book recommendations that you would like to share. Please pop them in the comments. And try not to have nightmares this season because it can be really scary. Thanks for watching. Bye.